Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert the RAW files that are not supported by Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo supports more than 17 graphic and RAW file formats. But if you use one of the formats that is not officially supported by Luminar, the best workaround is to convert the image into DNG file. Many cameras now allow you to shoot in DNG format in camera. But you can also install the free DNG converter from Adobe and convert your files in a computer. To start with, it's a good idea to check the official user guide for Luminar Neo on Skylum website. This always has the most updated information. Now don't worry about remembering it all, as I will list all the pages we're going to use in the description of the video. Once you open the supported file tabs page, you will be able to check if your graphic or RAW file format is currently supported by Luminar. If your RAW file format isn't on the list, you're going to need a RAW file converter. Currently, the best option is the free Adobe DNG converter. This handy application is available for Windows and Mac users, and it can be downloaded from the Adobe website. Once you're here, simply choose your operation system and then click on it to start the download. Once you download it, make sure you install it and open it, and then we're gonna continue from there. Once you have your DNG converter opened, we can go ahead and start to use it. Now to use the DNG converter is really simple. All we need to do is to follow the four steps. Starting with the step number one, select the folder where are your raw files. So we're just gonna click on the select folder, and then navigate towards the location where are our raw files. In our case, we're going to be using the sample files. And as always, if you want to follow me along and try it on your own computer, you can head into the description of the video and download the raw files from there. For this example, I choose three different types. We have the CR2, NEV, and DNG. Once you select the folder, you just click on Select. It will appear here, and then we can have a look at the two other options. If you have some subfolder in the folder, you can click on the include images contained with subfolders. I don't have any, so I'm not gonna click on it. And if you already done some converting earlier, you may be going to use the skip source image if the destination image already exists. What it basically means, if you already converted some images and save them in the destination location, it will skip them. So if that's the case, you can just click on this here and that's what it's going to do. For us, we don't have to worry about it, so we unclick it and move to the step number two. Here we're going to select the location to save converted images. The idea is same again. So we have a two options here. We can save it in a new location, or we can click on the drop-down box and choose the save in the same location. If you do that, you will basically save the files in the same folder where your images are coming from. In our case, let's just click on the drop-down box and choose the save in new location. By doing that, it will open the window again and we can navigate towards the folder called Converted, click on it to open it, and then just click Select. So now we have our images selected and we have the destination folder selected as well. The third option is to select name for the converted images. By keeping the document name, it will keep the same name as the original image. Now you can play around with this, it's really up to you. There are many different options. And when you click one little arrow here, you can adjust the naming convention. You can have the capitals of the document name, you can add serial numbers, dates, and so on. Now to make this easy, we're gonna keep the same name as the original image, and we're gonna move to the step number four. This is where we're going to adjust our preferences. So to do that, click on change preferences. 
Now we have the new preferences window open and we're gonna start from the top looking at the compatibility. I suggest you to always go for the highest number. However, if you're looking for a compatibility from some of the earlier versions of Camera Raw, you go ahead and choose it in the list. For us, as I say, let's go for the Camera Raw 14 and later, which is the current version. After you set up your compatibility, we can move towards the preview fast low data. Now, depending on your file, you may want to choose your JPEG preview. In this drop down box here, you can click on it and choose between none, medium size, and full size. By doing that, the fast load data will speed up the loading of the image when adjusting its setting. Now, if you choose to adjust the JPEG preview size, it may increase the DNG file size. Now moving on the next section, if the size is important for you, you can also explore the option of turning the lossy compression on. However, you should remember that it may result in some quality loss. Finally, if you want to ensure a complete compatibility across the photography systems, you can also choose to embed original RAW files into converted file. This way you will be able to extract it later if necessary. However, remember that it will significantly increase the size of the file. So once you're happy with the settings, all you need to do is to click on OK. Now we went to each of the steps and we are ready to convert. So once again, we have selected our files. Then we have choose the location to save the converted images. After that, in the step number three, we have select the name. And finally, we have adjusted the preferences based on what we're looking for. Now, once we're ready, we can just click on Convert. As you can see, it's really fast. It takes few moments. And what it does is it now takes the files, convert them to DNG format, and save them in the folder we selected earlier. Now, when we bring over the sample file folder, you can see the original images here. And when we open the converted folder, you can see the new files here with the DNG format. As you can see, they are ready and they can be imported in Luminar Neo and you can start with the edit. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.